Have you ever wondered what some of the things laying around your house, maybe your storage, maybe your garage are worth? Do you hold on to things knowing maybe one day, you know, it'll cost a lot of money? I know my mom does. I call her a hoarder and she has a lot. Well, today, stay tuned because we have one of the biggest stars of the Netflix show, King of Collectibles, The Golden Touch, Dave Ammerman. Are you ready to conquer the challenges in your life, business, wellness, and relationships? Are you ready to love parts of your life you didn't know you can love or succeed in? The Get Inspired Show brings you amazing topics and a variety of guests ranging from celebrities, reality stars, social media influencers, entrepreneurs, and major success stories. You will gain a large amount of knowledge and priceless advice in health, business, social media marketing growth, relationships, life balance, and much more. I hope you're ready to get inspired because the show starts now. His name is Dave Ammerman, and some people may know him also as a star of VH1's I Love New York, I Love Money, and Daisy of Love. They call him 12-pack. He's my former cast member. Welcome to the show, Mr. Ammerman. What's up, brother? Man, a lot's going on, man. It's great to be here, though, and uh, see you again, man. Long time, long time. Give, give, give them what they want. Give them what they want. Come on. Come on. That? Wow. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Hulkamaniacs. Or is that more like a <laughs> macho man? <laughs> uh, no, that was, that was a Hulkamaniac. That was, that was a Hulkamaniac. So what's up, brother? Congratulations, man. I've known you for close to 18, 19 years now, believe it or not. And uh, am I pushing that one? <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's close, actually. It's wow. close. It's yeah, close. close to think about. Um, you know, for the audiences that are new to you, Mr. Ammerman, um, I got a lot of respect for you because you've done a lot in this world. Giving back, you're also a father of three. Um, your parents are just amazing people that I've gotten the pleasure to meet. And I want you to share the experiences. You know, let's speak more currently on the Golden Touch. How did you get casted? How did you become this you know a lot of times people are they're assuming he's a good looking guy he probably just got lucky tell us a little background about that well um sometimes you do get lucky you know i would say in my younger years with the reality shows sure um but you know i did put some effort into that uh but as far as the golden touch i had been working on a project for four or five years i knew what i did was so interesting with collectibles and, um, you know, I'd actually filmed some other pilots, one with Johnny Damon, uh, where we were going to go out and get collectibles, raise money for his charity. Uh, I knew Brandon Steiner had a, a show called The Hookup and some other things. So I knew there was a market there. Ken Golden, where I work now, um, he was doing um, Shop at Home Collectibles Network, and he loved promotions. He's always on the news. Uh, he'll always go on, on the news and talk about our items. So it's just a good fit. And, uh, you know, it took, it took a while. You know, we, we pitched... We probably did two or three pilots. We had a couple different production companies. There was a lot of things involved. And, you know, some people that we hired later on, good looking younger guys, kind of came into it later. And, you know, maybe they ended up in a good spot, you know, and good for them. Um, but, you know, I was there, you know, really at the beginning putting this thing together. So when we finally did pitch it, uh, we had the right partners. We worked with uh, Peyton Manning's production company, Omaha Productions. Um, we got um, the. Uh, owner of Pawn Star Wheelhouse Productions as well, the creators of Pawn Stars. They uh, they put this together also. So to have them in your corner, obviously, they've sold network television shows for a long time. We had six different uh, opportunities uh, when we sold the show. And uh, we we were obviously on Netflix, six episodes. And, um, you know, we broke the top 10 in like 10 different countries. And uh, I got to play a big role because that's kind of what I do at the office anyway. So, uh, you know, I guess the rest is uh, history. We'll see. Uh, we'll see where we go with everything. Absolutely. Congratulations. So walk the audience really quick in, in under two minutes. What is the King of Collectibles, the Golden Touch all about? Uh, it's really about the market that I work in every day. And, you know, you, you have to call it a market. It's a sports collectibles business. You know, it's buying, selling, trading. You know, what we do is we auction them. So when you bring the items to us, we are going to we're looking for the biggest and best collectibles, not just in sports, but in history in music and entertainment. Uh, some of the items we get are uh, incredible. And some of the people we meet along the way are fascinating. And their backstory, how they got the items is really cool. Um, so, you know, you kind of tie all those together and you got the high stakes of the auction. There's a lot to make. There's a lot to lose, a lot of risk there. 
there, uh, we get to change people's lives with uh, big checks for items that they might have pulled as from a pack of trading cards as a kid. So there's a lot of really interesting parts and the celebrities we get to meet and hang out with, uh, you know, Ric Flair, Logan Paul, you know, Mike Tyson all uh, make appearances on season one, um, you know, and we've got some great things, uh, you know, in store uh, for the future, hopefully. That's amazing. Yeah, I had the pleasure of watching all the episodes. I mean, you answered it pretty straightforward. I mean, what I gathered, because, you know, I had a little idea of the show, but what I really liked about it, 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 it gives the, the audiences, the world, an inside look as to what you're doing internally. Uh, like you said, there's a lot of reward, there's a lot of risk, but also the opportunity to say, wow, you know, like I mentioned earlier, I may have the most random thing laying around at home that, you know, I may want to throw away because it's clutter, but you may look at it and say, Jason, <laughs> hold on a second. That actually may be worth a, a lot of money, right? Yeah, absolutely. It works both ways. You know, we run into people who have had things their whole life who thought they were invaluable and it was going to pay for their generations of families retirement. And I'm like, that thing's fake. You know, you're going to have those scenarios, uh, of course, uh, which are very uh, difficult to bear that news. And you're going to have the, the situations where someone has a jersey lying around forever and thinks it was from a minor league team. And I look at it and say, hey, that's Mickey Mantle's jersey that they sent down after the season to spring training or something. And all of a sudden it's a half million dollar uh, item, you know, so we're going to definitely have uh, the you're going to have trash to treasure uh, opportunities like that. But, you know, a lot of times people have a sense, right? You're going to have a sense of what you think. You might just not have a clue of how much or how valuable it is. Um, but what separates us from like the Pawn Stars or even Antiques Roadshow is a there's a young cast of guys and girls that, uh, you know, have a good time. We love what we do. You know, I think that's important. You know, you got to love what you do every day, um, you know, and we get to film a show about it as well. But we get to go out and find the biggest, best, most expensive items and kind of, you know, really run the high stakes game. And there's plenty of money to be made in what we do and plenty, you know, for, for everybody, for the for the guys who find the treasure and for us who are going out and trying to trying to get the buyer, you know, to spend the money. Because it's not just us great getting the items. We got to sell them too. You know, you got to have someone willing to pay. And, you know, in this economy, it's not, uh, it's not always easy. And we're looking at seven figures plus, you know, there's, we sold, I think there was like seven or eight seven figure items we got on season one, where for Pawn Stars, they were looking for a seven figure item the whole entire 19 seasons, 20 seasons. We had seven on season ones. So. Wow. 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 That's amazing. So, so imagine someone's watching the show right now and they get really pumped up. They're like, oh my God, I'm going to start looking through everything in my garage, storage, whatever. And correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm acting and I'm that person. I found something. I'm like, first step, Google it to see if it's worth something, right? Okay. Second step, if I see that people are selling something similar or maybe have a one-of-a-kind item, would I go to the Golden website and obviously try to put it up for an auction? Do I have to become a member? Is there a fee? Walk us through that for anyone that's watching or listening that may be interested. Yes, yeah, so we we are a high end luxury auction. Uh, you know, we really started with it's all kind of individual out connection. You know, with the sellers, and it's all everything's reviewed by a person, by an expert. You know, and we determine does this even make sense for you? Where we get a sense, where do you value this item, and where do we value it, and are we in the same? You know, we having the same conversation. Um, you know, ultimately, once you put that item up, you know, for auction, you know, you, you've committed to, to going that process, but you can go to our website and uh, fill out the uh, the sell forms in which I moderate personally myself. So I go through that. I've got 10 guys as well that'll go through it and reach out and talk and get photos and background stories of items and really help you try to value your item. And then we, we run 60, 70 auctions a year, non-sports auctions, weekly auctions, vintage auctions for older items, modern card auctions, um, you know, and we can just help you figure out what you have. And since the show is released, uh, like 10 times the amount of inbound, uh, you know, most people come to us, they have an idea of what they have. It's real high end. And you know, it's real niche. Now it's like, I got this beanie baby, I got this doll, you know, I mean, you know, I got this thing right here, what's it worth, you know, you never have a, a, right. a clue. And you know, we're, we'll, we'll be honest with somebody, you know, if it's good, but you, look, people have treasures, uh, we find all the time. And I love hearing those stories, you know, of something that their father got or they got, they had in the family. Uh, it's everything is unique usually, or at least for the most part. And, uh, 
you know, some of the wild requests I see or, you know, anything from Pablo Escobar's gun that he used to, uh, you know, this doorknob that has Honus Wagner's initials engraved. Should I, should I cut it out of the side of my house? And I'm like, I think it was a mailbox and it was like a brick house. I'm like, look, that'll make a good, a good episode. I don't know if I can sell it, but right. you know, everybody's got something that, you know, in their eyes, uh, people, and, and, and we're, this is a worldwide show. So I get to see guys in South America digging up rocks that they think have ancient like inscriptions on and uh, you know I, people that are famous in some countries i'm like i've never <laughs> heard of this person you know and right. uh, they're like this thing's worn by this sheik and i'm like I, okay like there's probably a value there like i've seen some crazy uh, crazy things come through um you know i think in the auction live right now we have two of the pope uh hats or one of the pope hats that he actually wore that he gave uh to somebody that was watching so we sold the bike from dumb and dumber the bike that they literally ride on in i the saw movie. that Greatest movie props ever. That is amazing. How much did the Dumb and Dumber buy a uh, motorcycle go for? Like twenty six or twenty eight thousand. That's unbelievable. Was it original owner? Uh, no, the original owner initially sold it to my buyer, who he owned like a brewery and he had it like on display at his bar, and like you know yeah. they kind of have fun with it, and it kind of ran its course for them. Um, he actually paid a lot. You know, he paid a lot for it, but it had a letter from the employee and everything. Um, you know, it's kind of like. Again, you know, it's kind of hard to ride around now, so he probably had a lot of fun with it. But uh, yeah. well, everybody you saw it loved it. You know, it's just one of those things, man. You know, that's that's another thing about what I look at, and you know, what we enjoy doing is if the piece like excites you and makes you like feel good about it. Like you know, for me, it's it's just that much better of an item and that much more fun to be like, look what I did today. You know, totally. totally. Talk to us a little bit about. Um, I'm a huge He-Man fan. I'm sure you are as well. Growing up. I'm sure you get tens of thousands of He-Man stuff. What is the most valuable He-Man item you have to date? You know, that's a, that's a good question. You know, believe it or not, I am a little versed on He-Man. It's certainly not my main area of expertise, but Carlo, the other guy in the show, is a big He-Man guy. Uh, I think he thinks he's He-Man for some reason. Uh, it <laughs> makes sense. He's like 6'3". You know, I mean, he's, not a, little, he's a big boy. Yeah. Um, but anyway, He-Man... Uh, the figures when we yes. were younger, the actual He-Man first figure unopened is, is huge. It's probably in good shape. It's five, 10 grand maybe. Um, and then the Skeletor as well, the unopened figures are the big ones, you know, really. I believe like the sword, if you have like an unopened brand new sword, should be several thousand, uh, you know, the, 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 the main sword for the thing, like unopened in great shape. Yeah. So there's some cool, um, you know, He-Man pieces, but think of the, the figures. I think there was like dogs and there was some other, but I've seen yeah. some just some, you know, regular open figures that go for a few grand. Like, you know, it's like we used to play with these things, you know, like if you kept it. And but you know what it is? That's what it's going through the cycle right now. Right. Like right. we're older. We've got some money. We're like, what do we do with it? Let's go. Oh, my gosh. I see this. It reminds me when I was a kid. It's it's the, the key for collectibles, though, right now is encapsulation. You know what I'm saying? Like you can take a figurine and these grading companies will put it in an encapsulation mm -hmm. and then it becomes collectible. So, for example, right here, this is a DVD. I mean, you look at DVD, you think it's not. And, and right behind me, that's actually a Bieber CD, Justin Bieber. But I'm going <laughs> to get it. I'll get it encapsulated. It'll be worth some money. Never mark. say never. <laughs> it's his first one. You know, trust me, it's, it's, it's Bieber's huge. Um, yeah, so this is literally, it's a cloudy with a chance of meatballs DVD. What I like about this is this one, though, is for your consideration for the wow. uh, uh, Academy Awards. It's unopened, so it was shipped out, and it's got a label that says it's got a number grade, so it like becomes a collectible all of a sudden, you know. And it certainly was a lot more money than just just that, but they build Absolutely. these pieces like around them, so you know that's that. You can put your toys; they build them around the toys. It just adds like so yeah. much value. You yeah, know? that's amazing. What is the most random that you can think off the top of your head? For, again, for I'm always about the audiences. By the way, guys, drop a comment throughout this episode. If you have any questions on any items, me or Dave, we'll make sure to get back to you. So just give me five of the most random items that you never guessed in your wildest dreams would be worth as much. Wow. Um, geez, five of them. You know, I, I, I mean, it could be from time. toys to mugs. Like, you, do you remember those 80s uh, McDonald's Garfield mug collection? There was like, there, a lot of people collect those. I know people that still hold on to them. I'm like, is that even worth anything? I don't know. <laughs> uh, you know, the lunch boxes are worth some money. Those are more fun, though. You know, you go to like a toy auction, you get them for like 
10, 20 bucks and you get the He-Man or whatever, not in great shape. Um, you know, honestly, I'm surprised like the modern trading card market is like people will pay and it's just the emotion of like investing in younger guys. People right. will pay so much. I mean, we're talking six, seven figures for these modern players that aren't even like Hall of Fame caliber guys yet. So to me, I mean, that's always going to, you know, that's the main core of what we do really at Golden as well as modern cards. Everybody loves them. It's just an interesting, you know, phenomenon that those go for what they do, but but they do. Um, you know, game five. Give me five. Give me man. It can be anything. Like something when you first started working to now, like the most random stuff that you're like telling your your friends, like what the hell? <laughs> I mean, Joe, Joe, we sold that golden Joe Frazier's jock strap from like a big boxing match for like nine grand. You know, it was a big fight, and but it's just it's right. kind of piece, you know, for someone to buy and own. Um you know, you always run into like uh, professional alf uh, players' outfits, and then he's got like the underwear with it or something. But uh, I just find that fascinating that they pay that. Um, you know, man, it's, uh, it's that's, a, that's a tough call because I think I've I, maybe I'm just numb and seen so much of it so that much, like yeah. I just know that this is what it is. But you know, it's always fascinates me. If someone assigned Michael Jordan jersey, like just a signed Jordan jersey right now. It, it, I, we were there were a couple hundred bucks when we were you know kids, right? Right. Then they went to like a, then they went to almost like a thousand like a decade or fifteen hundred you know fifteen years ago. What do you think like a signed authentic Michael Jordan jerseys were worth right now? I I'm gonna probably go with like eighty grand to a hundred. You know, I mean that's a little on the steep side because there's so many of them out there, but they're like ten thousand dollar plus. These are jerseys that he just signed. They put in boxes, like not worn. You know, like sure. yeah. I mean, just to me, if you're paying, and I've seen them go for 25, 30, 35 grand, you know, I mean, so yeah, I like, look, I'm sure someone would have paid 80, you know, in the right market. I know it's Jordan, but the, you know, it's just things like that to me are like, we've, right. you know, we collect them when we were younger and they weren't, you know, they weren't yeah. close to that price. You know? I, I was just wondering, cause there was a gentleman on one of your episodes and he came in with some, I believe he sold a Britney Spears top. And um, you guys actually, I believe, bought that. And he also had like a handkerchief or towel that Michael Jackson like wiped his make off off. And you guys were like, no. So that's why I was wondering, like, you know. I've, I think I've sold I think I've sold Michael Jackson prescription pill bottles before for like 500 bucks. Um, and I and I sold Jack Johnson uh, vitamin tablets that were from like. 1910 the, the tablets were still in and open for like 400 dollars, like a couple weeks ago wow just like weird you know weird that's those are some weird things you know i mean uh we sold a train ticket like to go see one of jack johnson fights for like three four hundred dollars you know so and then these nintendo games man these nintendo games i got a game boy uh in the box you know behind me right there those things mm -hmm. are like fifteen hundred dollars in the original boxes and stuff you know so now yeah. what do you would you say most people that are purchasing these higher price items, these are people that are more well off financially that just they want to claim that they got that. And is that pretty much a, a majority of, of your clientele? Yeah, you know, I mean, we cover a lot of spectrums, but our price points, you know, for venture initially were, were very high. We've come down a lot just to, you know, kind of with the show. You know, like we were getting 3,000 new registered users a month, maybe, you know, with a pretty incredible trajectory prior to the show. Yeah. After the show, it was a, we were getting that a week. You know, I mean, it was like, wow, you know, four or five X of registered users. You know, I mean, we're talking 10,000 plus a month. So you got to have something for everybody to buy. You know, if it's a $100 item or a $200, you know, we have auctions where our minimum ticket is $7,500. You know, so it's like, no one's going to come and sign up and, you know, and shop around if, if the only thing we're offering there. So, you know, but, but, but typically, yes, our main bread and butter, most of our clients are like recession proof. You know what I mean? Like, like, yeah, money's not really the object to them. Uh, but, you know, we've, we've seen, and, and I've seen some guys make a ton of money just by buying and holding. And I've seen guys lose millions, uh, you know, buying in the wrong markets and dabbling with some, you know, very uh, high end, um, you know, risky investments. That's wild. That's wild. So what about like the random famous people that had fame for a period? Let's just be, listen, let me think out of the box. Okay. So as you know, I'm a huge, uh, you know, me and you are big Backstreet Boys fans, as you know. Uh, <laughs> so say, let's take a cast, sorry, cast member, uh, a group member from NSYNC, right? Not just in Timberlake, but you know, one of the other ones that, you know, they got fame, but they didn't get the biggest. Do you guys buy things like that from like, 
you know, because I'm sure there's a huge audience still of NSYNC fans, right? Uh, do you guys have anything like that at, at Golden? Um, I mean, we've probably got a signed photo here or there. We probably, I think we have one, you know, in the house right now, if I recall, uh, gotten getting one a couple months ago. Um, you know, as far as like working with a guy in the band, you know, there are people like that. Um, you know, I'll be honest though, man, it's, it's like anything, right? Like you're going to want to spend the money on the recognizable, most popular, you know, one, right? Sure. So obviously Timberlake's going to go, I've talked to, you know, some of his relatives, you know, in the past about things and potentially, um, you know, he had, he was a collector or, you know, sometimes what happens is like the sister or the brother of someone famous gets some of the items or has it, uh, you know, I, I definitely ran into a situation with a very famous band, a member from the eighties, a rock band member, very, very, very big band. And his right. sister sold a bunch of items. And, uh, I told her, you know, look, I don't want any problems making sure you own these items. And, um, uh, you know, sometimes they own them. Sometimes they don't, you know, and you can't sell items that are, don't belong to you. So, you know, I mean, I have to make sure that, you know, everything is, is what it is, but, um, you know, we see, we see a lot of, a yeah. lot of different scenarios, man, you know, and we work with a lot of big athletes, you know, Cal Ripken Jr. I, I work with right now, direct, uh, we're working with some other big uh, baseball players that are current right now, uh, you know, soccer stars and, and all different sports. Uh, I work with guys in the NFL, you know, helping them sell their awards and whatnot. So, uh, the list goes on and on about people. I was just talked to Chuck Knobloch the other day about some things, uh, you know, potentially selling some stuff and, uh, you know, I, I can't mention everyone I talked to, but I was talking to a pretty big Hollywood uh, producer that everybody knows, uh, you know, a week ago, uh, who was bidding in the auction about some items. So it's really cool to just have these combos like on the regular at this point. Absolutely. That's amazing. So this is uh, another random. Uh, let's just take, uh, you know, our former friend. Well, we're still friends with her. Um, good old Tiffany New York Pollard. Right. Let's let's take it back a little bit before we we take off. Um, would an item of Tiffany's ever do you feel be auctioned that golden because i think that might actually be a hit i mean it could you know happen if somebody has the item and wanted to do it i would absolutely run it you know um sure. so yes we have pop culture non-sports auctions where we do have like items from like the power rangers uh that was the same one where we sold the uh, the uh the wand from harry potter mm -hmm. the bike from dumb and dumber you know so we do have like pop culture themed auctions with some great things so I would put something in there. I used to have yeah. a pair of underwear um, and man, I don't know where it went, but I have like the video of it above my bed and everything on the show. She was yeah. the award I got for the drawing contest or right. something like that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Whatever it was. And I had it at the house and I don't know how I, how the heck do I lose that, man? I have no idea. Maybe somebody thought, stole it and they might be auctioning somewhere else. <laughs> my mother probably thought it was somebody else's and like threw it out. Right, right. So what, uh, I mean, obviously there's a huge contrast. I get this question several times a month people that you know run into me on social media sometimes in person they're like you know you know jason uh aka he you you practically look the same we both have not aged much you know good genes and taking care of ourselves what would you say is the biggest contrast uh you know from so many years ago all these wild vh1 shows to this wholesome dave Right. You know, the family man. I mean, what, talk to talk to me a little you bit. Know, I mean, 15 years of maturity. Right. Uh, or maturing, I guess, because, you know, we can't say well, fully maturity. Well, because not everybody from our shows matured, though. Let's just keep that. Clear. Yeah, I mean, that's true, too. <laughs> man. And I was always, uh, I think, a mature, like, you know, like kind of level headed person, although I always enjoyed having a good time and being fun and just doing immature things, I guess. So, uh, my personality and, 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 you know, but I know when I'm doing it, I know what I'm doing, you know, I guess the whole time. Um, right. but I, I, I love it, you know, because what we did before was like really, um, it could be looked at a couple different ways, you know, or, or certainly one way versus another, you know, there was a lot of people that didn't respect it or, you know, thought we were being foolish and whatnot, but what we're doing now, it's a respectable, it's what I do for, for work. So it's about the work, but we have fun doing it and with it. Um, so, you know, I threw on a wrestling singlet and when I had a scene with Ric Flair, you know, like I had fun with it. So I was able to, um, show that side of me a little bit too, even if during most of the season, if you watch season one, nobody gets to show another side. It's all about the product and the business, but I come out in the wrestling singlet. So I've, I've opened that door a little bit, you know, yeah. so for me to expand, you know, and, and do something there, 
yeah. would be would be great. You know, so and I love love what I do. What I what I the way I am on the show is really what's going on. I manage a team of guys. I report direct to Ken. I'm a very you know busy guy within the company. A lot of people you know come to me for direction, or at least most people do of their departments. You know, so uh, I'm, I have my hand in the pot in every decision that's made almost you know with the company. So um, you know it's it's a lot of work, but um, you know it's a it's fun to do it and do it on, on camera and, uh, you know, get yeah. to hang out with celebs and look at cool stuff, man. It's amazing. It's amazing. Well, you know what I do for a living as a life wellness relationship and social media coach. Uh, one of the biggest pe people uh, in the world that I look up to and, you know, our fellow friend, Tony Robbins, um, you know, being lazy is a choice and being a hard worker is a choice, right? You've chosen to take the path of working hard, but also intellectually and emotionally stable. What would you, what advice would you give people out there that don't even work one fourth of what you work because they see the you know the grant you know the, the big flashing lights? What what is there is no secret, but tell us your formula for anyone out there that wants to enhance their life and just get off their lazy ass. Yeah, you know it's um. You got to You got to earn it. You know, um, not, a, you know, some people get lucky, but, but luck is when, you know, um, training, you know, meets opportunity. Right. Um, so for me, a, I do what I love, right? Like I could, I did finance for a little, I did this, I did that, but I was faking it. You know, I just really wanted to do it because of the money, but it, it wasn't the passion to do it and get to like the top level. Cause I kind of didn't enjoy it or I didn't enjoy it at all. Um, you know, and that's not the hard work, but you know, I kind of went the long route, you know, I, 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 I was raising a kid, you know, I was supporting myself, I was supporting my wife, I went from being fame and, you know, having everything or at least thinking I was getting my own show to kind of, you know, having to having to start over and work from the ground up, um, you know, and for me, it's those years of, you know, just kind of not taking for granted, you know, any dollar, you know, any opportunity, anything, and just seeing, you know, where we're at, you know, here 10 years later um, is awesome, you know, it's, it's, I educate myself, you know, um, but again, I just, it all started with, a passion for what I wanted to do and me just saying enough, you know, doing things that you need to make money, do what you love to do, get a paycheck from it. And I quit my job. I moved halfway across the country. I said, let's start over. And I said, what do I want to do? And I said, I want to be in professional sports. I like collectibles. I want to work with athletes and I want to work at a big firm that does this. And I'll start at the bottom as lowest level I can get in. And, you know, I'll let me show you, you know, that I'm worth the, the, the amount of money. And within six months, I was promoted to a manager. And, um, you know, my, I've been managing for, for nearly a decade in that hobby and growing companies wow. from, you know, tens of millions to hundreds of millions. So it's been a, it's been a fun journey, man. Uh, you know, hopefully it keeps going. Do what you love and the money will come. I completely agree. Just really quick because we only have a couple minutes. Um, how did you find this position? Or I, I know you escalated up and you moved up, but how did you find it? Was it a newspaper ad? Uh, no, what I did was I, I went and I said, what company do I want to work for? And I went to their site and I reached out direct uh, to them. And at the time it was Steiner Sports, who was partners with the Yankees, the Knicks, the Rangers, you know, all these professional yeah. athletes, Derek Jeter, you know. So I reached out because I knew Steiner and I was like, hey, look, I love this stuff. Look at my resume. And actually I was already in magazines and I had some nice uh, memorabilia sales. So I put that together because they weren't hiring, but I was like, I got to make them need to hire me. I went in and they were like, look, I've never had someone hand me a magazine of them with, you know, for resume and, and computer interviews, because I did some interviews from from the TV shows where they were talking about collectibles and me and people knew that I did that. Um, so I had all that, you know, so that was like, they just get me in the door and it barely paid my gas and, you know, uh, money to, to work there. Uh, and then I negotiated my way up and I ended up leaving five years ago to Golden. And I'll tell you, we negotiated with Golden and I liked what I heard. And I just straight up left uh, Steiner, which was a great opportunity. It was, a, you know, it was a bold move and I'll never regret it, man. And Golden has been, you know, straight to the top. And I, Golden was the leader. So I got in where I wanted to. And I said, look, these guys are leading the pack. Let me talk to them. And, you know, they brought me on, man. So, um, you know, I had some good good choices that I had to make and uh, tough decisions, you know, leaving a comfortable six figure position, you know, in New York, working in, in the position you love to go to South Jersey to work for an up and coming pretty big company. Um, that was, you know, the pay was fine. But what's the you know, what's the longevity there? And here we are, you know, Netflix series, uh, you know, we're doing hundreds of millions of revenue, we have hundreds of employees, we had 12 when I started over here, you know, I took the job when it was a small, uh, you know, mom and pop. Wow, wow, wow. You said it, though. 
And for anyone out there that's driving, or I'm going to say it for day one more time, you created your opportunities. I repeat, you created your opportunities. So ladies and gentlemen, I have a big announcement, big segue, and then we're going to wrap this up. I, a little birdie told me season two is coming out. Is that true? Uh, we do have the confirmation that season two is coming out. It's going to be longer. There's going to be more episodes. It's going to be more action packed. We're going to have higher stakes. Um, you know, we're coming back. And for me, I've been getting ready for it physically, mentally. You know, it's like working two full time jobs when it comes. But uh, yeah, we're uh, we're going to be rolling in no time. Just a few weeks away. Congratulations, brother. Look, I couldn't be more proud of you. You earned where you're at. And uh, my biggest advice, not to you, uh, because you already know this, but to anyone as we uh, say bye, um, once you get what you want, that is when the hard work really begins. Right now, you have such a big platform that I could only imagine what the next few years are going to bring you. Happiness, health, lots of money, and caliente success, my friend. Hopefully, man. I mean, uh, that's the goal, and uh, it's been it's been going that way so far. So, health is the most important, of course, man. Got to stay in the gym, you know. I'm uh, I'm getting up there in age, brother. Hey, man, we're good to go. Listen, everybody, make sure to follow Dave on social media: Instagram, Twitter, of course, our good old TikTok, and on Threads. Yes, Dave is on Threads. Uh, I'm going to put all the links below. We have 30 seconds. Any last words? Uh, hopefully you guys just stay tuned. Uh, hopefully you guys follow me on social, hit me up, say what's up, um, you know, and hopefully enjoy the ride. But if you guys like season one, again, season two is going to be even better. And, um, you know, season one was a short one. Uh, season two is going to be a little bit longer and uh, I think people are waiting for it. So hopefully it's coming real soon. That's what's up. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you're a new viewer and don't forget to click on the bell so you can get notifications every time a new show releases. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and feel free to leave your comments. I'm Jason Roselle and you're watching Get Inspired with Jason.